Kajay's his career, held up the whole Packers organization, retired the whole Jets fiasco, the Vikings fiasco. Like, if you don't shut your bum ass up, first off, Deshaun Watson's already a better quarterback than you if we're just keeping it a bean as far as him not throwing interceptions, taking sacks, and doing stupid shit. I'm pretty sure if we put him on those Packer teams, they would have won more Super Bowls than they did, but that's a whole other story. Second off, who are you to count another man's money? Like, you did, did you learn nothing from the Aaron Rodgers fiasco? And he only, I've noticed it, he don't talk about white quarterbacks when they're trying to get paid. He spoke on Patrick right. McCoy. He spoke to other black And teams. in other news, in other white QBs telling black QBs what to do news, Carson Palmer said on the radio that Dak Prescott should take less money because he's the Dallas Cowboys starting QB, America's team. Again, Carson Palmer should probably shut up because Deshaun Watson was a better college player than you two. You just happened to win the Heisman. But whatever. USC QBs are notorious failures when they get to the NFL. That's a fact. That's just an unmitigated fact. Because uh, we're not calling him a Hall of Famer. We're not. I mean, he was a pro bowler. That's more than some of the other USC quarterbacks. He's the he's the best one you can think of. Name Sadly. a better USC QB. Sadly. Exactly. Uh, Watson freaking made out. He Deshaun Watson embarrassed Nick Saban on national television twice. In his NFL defense, twice. I just thought Not it was really the greatest college defense ever assembled because all those motherfuckers made it to the NFL. I just How thought it whole was starting defense make it to the league. I thought it was funny listening to uh, the Super Bowl media this week, and um, the Keyshawn show had a uh, Jalen Smith on the air, and he was like, the "Cowboys, yeah." And then he was just like, "What's up, USC? Great, Keyshawn." And then he's, and then they were just going back and forth, USC Notre Dame, and Keyshawn ended the interview with. All right, Jalen, we'll fight on, brother. <laughs> he was like, "Shut up, Key." I mean, never get out of those those high, those college rivalries. I just want to point out, Notre Dame has never won a big BCS bowl game. Hello, caller. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, this is Eric, second time caller and long time listener. <laughs> hey, all right, Eric. So you want to take us into the rants? What you got this week? Uh, it's just Super Bowl. I mean, everybody's looking forward to the whole matchup. I mean, it's already going down. It's probably one of the top ten quarterback matchups in the Super Bowl era with the what's considered the GOAT and what's considered the future and the best. So I'm just hoping for a very high-scoring games. And my money is on blue Gatorade for some different old <laughs> props and odds. Prop bets. Yeah, sorry we didn't get to that, man. I, I really wanted to get to that, but we had so many call-ins. Um, any other, any other uh, crazy prop bets you thought were funny or ironic? Um, or? Well, there are some that are kind of funny. Like, I mean, they got um, the odd, the over and under if this uh, the uh, national anthem is going to be over a minute and fifty nine seconds. Yeah, and looking over the last few years, like Lady Gaga has won the highest of two minutes and nine seconds. Alicia Keys in Super Bowl Forty Seven for two minutes and thirty five seconds. But there is another stat saying if there is any scoring drive that would be less than the length of the national anthem. And I think if there was one, um, it pays out. I think plus like seven hundred and fifty. Damn. So, I mean, do you, what do you think? Do you think there would be a, a, a score that would be, say, under a minute, 59 seconds in the whole game? Um, I was listening to some some betters, and they were saying to take the under on that. I think, I think like, one big bomb to anybody. It's because it's, it's through the whole game, so why not try it? That, I think that's a big payout right there. Um, I thought one that was crazy was the one um, where – like you can basically what Trump be mentioned and it pays out um minus 2000 for no so that means if you put down $100 and Trump does not get mentioned you win $2000 No no well no if yes the uh, or the odds according to um uh with Donald Trump actually the odds of Donald Trump are being are more than what they're giving Joe Biden Yeah yeah they're saying if Joe Biden is being Mentioned it would pay out plus seven fifty, 
and then if uh, Donald Trump is plus six hundred, but if they're not, oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, so that, it got messed up on the the dog. Make a, yeah, so to make on, so so with Biden, the odds are more that he won't be mentioned compared to Trump. And then the other one I thought that was funny was, um, will Drake be on the stage? <laughs> During the halftime show, there's a, there's a bunch of those funny ones going on with them. But yeah, Drake has an odds. Let's see if I can pull it up right here. Uh, Drake has a minus 700 uh, odds to show up. So put. Um, but it, it's saying plus four hundred if he does show up. So you put a hundred dollars down and you get five uh, four hundred dollars back if he does show up on stage. So that's pretty good one there. I think some of the funnier ones I saw too is um, the odds of the uh, of the MVP mentioning the the uh, who he mentioned first in his first speech afterwards. So mm. teammates obviously minus sixty. God at plus two hundred, family or fr- family member at plus six hundred, city at six fifty, and then co- coach, owner, or none of the above is a plus sixteen hundred. So, but you doubt that you ever hear players say think their coach or owner first before everybody else. <laughs> and so, that's why NFL players can't aren't supposed to be gambling. The weekend actually yeah. put up the weekend actually put up seven million dollars of its own money for the halftime show. Oh yeah, really? that's some Kanye shit. He, so, this I mean, isn't my vision. I need to get more money. He did. He, I, I don't know if you saw his latest video, um, where he had the fake plastic surgery and the fake mandible jaw, and everybody was like, "Is he on drugs?" Dog, I haven't listened to Weekend in a cool two albums, three albums. Well, you should definitely check out his latest song. It's like uh, "Save Your Tears for Another Day," but yeah. Um, this last album start. This last album, was bro. Born. All your songs are about drugs and and crying. So and, how are you gonna say save your tears for another day? And because you on the other side, while you're, while you're crying, yeah. <laughs> and women and like not trusting people and everybody being fake. Well, yeah. He should have got nominated for a Grammy. Bro, fuck the weekend. Let's move on. But I mean, yeah, it's just well, weird. if Drake, I don't I know how Drake would come too. out because like, he's Canadian. And that don't he's mean OVO, shit. It's XO. He gets They're, paid off. Aren't the they weekend. in direct competition? Pretty much. No, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Sh- weekends worth more money. I'm pretty sure the the I'm pretty sure Drake gets paid off the weekends though. Which uh, I, I don't know. What the fuck was that? Eric? Did you drop your Did you drop your seltzer water, bro? Your pel- did you drop your Pellegrino <laughs> on the mic? <laughs> blink twice. Blink. Cough twice if you're safe. But yeah, like seven million for a halftime show, bro. Of his own money that he threw in. All right. So and Jasmine you, Sullivan. Sorry, guys. Did I lose you all? Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you know oh, anything sorry. about black singers. They're definitely going to take two minutes to sing a national anthem. Motherfuckers be taking 20 minutes to pray at dinner. Trust me, Jasmine Sullivan is going to take at least two minutes to sing a national anthem. <laughs> I, can, I can say that, and only because it's Black History Month. But yeah, it's a fact. All right, Eric. So <laughs> Remember when Jamie Foxx took forever to sing the national anthem at that boxing match? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else on your heart you want to share with the people? Uh, I just got Izzy on the phone. Do you want to take it, Izzy? Sure. My voice is gone this week, but I I think I I don't know what I think about the Super Bowl. I didn't think that Tom Brady was going to make it that far. I thought he was kind of old, um, but I'm not educated on football at all. Um, yeah. You listen to this podcast every that. week. I hope you're educated a little bit. <laughs> Is that how we're saying y'all don't like, teach shit? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, okay, that's fair. Um, I, I just sometimes I get lost when you guys say um, names. I'm like, I have no idea who that is. And you're like, yeah, he's really, really, really cool and great. And he did this, this, and this. How you feel about the weekend and the Super Bowl halftime show? Um, I'm glad he chose to do that instead of the Grammy. Fair point. Nobody's watching the Grammy. Sounds about white. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it'll be fun. 
But uh, I I don't know. It's it's interesting the Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes thing. Kenny, uh, as far as I go, um, I think it's gonna be forty one to thirty eight Chiefs. Um, somehow they're gonna pull it out. It's gonna be. I trust the special teams more. Um, Hardman is just destined to make a play and break out. Like he's had flashes all year. He's destined to take that next step, which is saying a lot for a Georgia wide receiver. Um, because Georgia plays usually choking the clutch. Do you like who's Hardman? <laughs> <laughs> just check his forty time. It's all right. I didn't know who he was until Kenny put him on my Madden team. Yeah, and helped you win a Super Bowl. If you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Is that the title? But anyway, uh, I'm going to say the Lions ultimately won that trade with uh, Matthew Stafford. Why didn't we talk about that at all? Because we just we, talk, that we was another rundown. Run that was at all. top of the list, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to end it with I think that uh, the Lions, if they don't screw this up, they're in a position with Jared Goff. Uh, arguably, the Lions have better weapons than the Rams do on offense. Galladay, even if Marvin Jones leaves, you have TJ Hawkinson, who literally is Dan Cable, Dan Campbell's favorite player already, just because Dan Campbell's a blocking tight end. TJ Hawkinson can block his ass off and won the Mackey Award for best tight end in college and was a pro bowler last year and is only going to get even more touches and targets, and he's going to be Jared Goff's best friend. TJ Hawkinson, I'm definitely taking him in fantasy high next year. Um, Hawkinson, Galladay, DeAndre Swift, um, Adrian Peterson still hanging on, and then you got um, he tore his ACL. Uh, what's the running back's name? Swift. I, no, I already said Swift. Um, um he tore his ACL. Uh, he went to Auburn. I know his name. Uh, Carry on Johnson. There we go. Carry on Johnson. Um, there's a lot of skill players there now. If they somehow manage to uh, get Panay Sewell or Mac- I think they're going to go linebacker and somehow get Makai Parsons out of Penn State. Because Gerard Davis just isn't the answer at linebacker. But anyway, I think the Lions won that trade. I think uh, it's going to be interesting. The landscape of football, if Brady wins, this is going to justify more older QBs sticking around longer than they need to. I'm just going to say this on the Stafford stuff. Um, I think Stafford is a good QB. I don't know if I necessarily think the Rams are the best fit for him only because I don't think they necessarily have the same big sort of targets that he needs to kind of thrive. Uh, with that, though, I also feel like Detroit, like, dog, if I told you Detroit was going to get two first rounders for Matthew Stafford at age 32 years old and a former number one pick, 34, I'm sorry, and another number one pick, who's played in the Super Bowl, like, Detroit did great on that trade. Like, let's be real. And the Rams, I've put the poll out on TD's underscore tangents, but who's going to be left with the build if this doesn't pan out? Is it Stafford? Is it Sean McVay? Is it Les Snead? Because I get it. Aaron Donald is 29 years old. He's only got a few more years of being Aaron Donald especially at that position where he's taking so much beating and especially if they continue to not have first round draft picks and not putting around elite talent around him and just kind of relying on him to elevate everybody else's game. But with with all that said, basically what I'm saying is the Rams have to win it or else it's going to be a really ugly situation for them when they do finally welcome fans into that new stadium because, well, you don't have any more first round picks and you can only scrape by developing talent from nowhere for so long. Like at some point you got to take a lead talent and we all know, cause we all know Jalen Ramsey's is not going to be quiet either if they start losing and things start imploding. So he can get ugly real quick for the Rams, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Hollywood nightmare. Trevor Wallace to the Rams. <laughs> and as far as the Super Bowl, man, I'm just looking forward to a good game. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's 
I'm I'm really going with Tampa just because I like their defense in terms of turnovers, in terms of you know being top ten in both run and pass defense. They got two headed monster in the backfield, even though they don't really even use them, and they got two big, polished, fast. 